In this video, we're going to ditch Unity and build a VR app from scratch using C++ and ChatGPT. Game programming legend John Carmack, creator of Doom and Quake, is famous for creating high-performance C and C++ game engines. He once said that if you want to learn game development, you should write small games from scratch while also learning how to use a commercial game engine like Unity and Unreal. Notch, the creator of Minecraft, wrote his own game engine in Java. This meant that he didn't have to pay massive royalties to use a commercial game engine. Jonathan Blow, creator of acclaimed indie games Braid and The Witness, wrote his own game engine in C++. He thinks that the new generation of programmers depending on Unreal and Unity no longer know how to do low-level things. So me and ChatGPT are taking on the challenge of building a VR app in C++ without using Unity or Unreal. I'm probably gonna regret this. To start, I launched Android Studio and made a new project with the native C++ development template. I connected my Quest 3 headset and could immediately deploy the native sample app. Did you know that you can run normal 2D Android apps in a spatial window on Quest? I can even pinch the flap. But we want to build a 3D VR app on Quest, which means we'll have to use OpenXR. OpenXR is a native cross-platform API for virtual and augmented reality. This API is used behind the scenes by Unity and Unreal, and any engine can directly interface with OpenXR. ChatGPT provided the code for the OpenXR setup, and there's also some sample code on the Kronos OpenXR GitHub that we can use as a reference. After a few seg faults and some debugging in Android Studio, I was able to get the OpenXR session initialized. In VR, the app needs to render an image for the left and right eyes every single frame. The 3D scenes are offset by the distance between the eyes so we can create the effect of stereoscopic vision and be able to see depth. The app is required to submit an OpenXR swap chain for each eye. A swap chain is an object that represents a queue of images that can be presented to the display. It's used to implement triple buffering which can reduce tearing and improve performance. We can acquire a swap chain image at the beginning of the VR frame, modify the image, and then submit it to the system compositor as a layer for displaying on the screen. Now that we have the swap chain image to write into, we just need to use a graphics API like OpenGLES or Vulkan to actually render in 3D. OpenGLES is a classic mobile graphics API for accelerating 3D rendering using the GPU. 3D objects are broken down into triangle meshes and texture images. Programs called shaders are run on the GPU hardware. The vertex shader calculates the position of each vertex in a mesh. The fragment shader determines the color for each pixel on the screen. Setting up OpenGLES for rendering is a bit of a pain, but ChatGPT helped along the way. Soon we were ready to render our first 3D objects in VR. I asked ChatGPT to generate the geometry for some basic 3D shapes like a cube, sphere, and a torus. It also was able to generate the wireframes. And just like that, I had some 3D objects in VR. Hand tracking is supported on Quest, and we can use OpenXR to get information about the position of the hands, and OpenXR vendors can add new functionality in VR or AR using extensions. ChatGPT provided the code to use the hand tracking extension to get the position of the hand joints each frame. Once I had that, I used spheres to visualize the hand joints in VR. Adding support for AR was actually way easier than when I first tried getting AR working in Unity. The AR video feed gets added as a layer and submitted to the system compositor. The app layer 3D content gets drawn on top. We just have to make sure to clear the background to be transparent so that we can see the camera feed. I wanted to be able to use models from Sketchfab. Instead of spending a ton of time writing a bad C++ model loader, I decided to use a mobile optimized open source library called Filament that supports loading 3D models in GLTF format. Filament is a cross-platform, physically-based rendering library created by Google. Physically-based rendering is the industry standard for creating realistic-looking objects and scenes using physically accurate materials and lighting. This damaged helmet model is the classic PBR rendering demo. It's kind of like the new Utah teapot in computer graphics. Here you can see the base color, metalness, roughness, ambient occlusion, emissive, and specular material components. If you're interested in learning more about physically based rendering, Filament has probably the most exhaustive documentation I've ever seen. Seriously, it's like a textbook on computer graphics. Filament recently added support for stereo rendering, but there was no VR sample code. ChatGPT wasn't very helpful for this part, since it wasn't too familiar with the Filament library so I mainly relied on filament sample code to help integrate into my XR project. This was definitely the hardest part of the project so far. 
When I finally got 3D models loading in my XR app, it started to become a lot more interesting. I started trying a bunch of different GLTF models in VR. I added the ability to pinch and zoom and pinch and drag to rotate the 3D model. I realized that I probably should try to improve my hands. I used the XR FB hand tracking mesh extension and I was able to render the hand meshes using filament. I ran into some minor issues animating the finger joints, but eventually I got it working. Now I can finally square up against Goku. Rest in peace, Akira Toriyama. Now that we have the fundamentals down, I have some ideas of what we can build with the C++ XR app. Let me know in the comments if you think I should just give up and switch back to Unity. And don't worry, I'll be releasing the source code for this project once completed, so make sure you like and subscribe and turn on that bell. Hope you're ready for the next episode. Peace.